Welcome to the Tandem Talk Show, where we help women dial in their nutrition and fitness so that they can lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. And now your host from Tandem Nutrition, Coach G. Yo, hey, what's up, everyone? It's Coach G here, back with amazing Coach Layla tonight. We have a very exciting and brand new episode of the Tandem Talk Show, episode 23. It's going to be an amazing episode, so you want to make sure to stick around to the very end as we answer your most pressing questions for this episode and all other nutrition and fitness questions. Um, as you know, I'm your host, Coach G, and this is a podcast dedicated to help women learn how to lose fat in a very healthy and sustainable way without fad diets or diet gimmicks. Guys, we're excited. Today, we're covering all about carbohydrates, facts, and fiction, busting myths. And again, I am joined here by the amazing Coach Layla. Coach Layla, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. Coach Layla is actually in, is it Washington? I'm in Seattle, Washington right now, yeah. Yeah, how's the weather that way right now? It's cold, but I feel like it's probably warmer than Indiana. Just a little bit colder than what I'm used to to in florida you know it's it was like 50 degrees here today so um okay i was surprised That's nice. yeah uh not any snowy time soon hopefully but um, anyway. i'm glad you made it to washington safely and i heard you had some big plans with a, a famous uh literally a famous choreographer is that correct yeah yeah so i'm gonna be competing again this year and she um choreographed my routine today so i'm super excited about that so have some good stuff to practice and deliver this year. Boom, guys, be sure to follow Coach Layla on Facebook and Instagram uh, to see her journey throughout her next show. Uh, she won first place in her last fitness competition, and she's not taking anything less in first place this next show in July. And when should we expect you compete compete again, Layla? Yeah, the first competition is July 2nd and 3rd, so that first week of July. I think you already said that. It's me lack of listening. Thank you for that <laughs> reminder. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you for uh, tuning in with us today. If you're joining us live today, please hashtag comment, hashtag carbohydrate, because tonight's topic is all about carbs. But just like any other episode, we want to start off each episode with some big client wins that our amazing clients are experiencing throughout their programs with our coaches. As you know, at Tandem, um, our team is dedicated to helping women, again, lose fat, tone up, and learn how to transform their lives forever. We have a couple big wins from Coach Boston. Coach Boston uh, is one of our coaches here at Tandem. And one of his clients, Danielle, has officially broke the 15-pound mark in just eight weeks guys this is incredible 15 pounds in eight weeks that's nearly two pounds a week that is coming out out of thanksgiving out of christmas and throughout the quarantine and pandemic so great job danielle really super proud of you and also jamie uh my great friend uh jamie who's also a client of ours uh she had mentioned throughout her program that she just started that she has never felt this under control with her diet in a very long time. So awesome job, Jamie. Really proud of you. And last but not least, on my end, I uh, want to give a big shout out to Lindsay Ledbetter. She is absolutely crushing her diet with Coach Casey. She's experiencing some pretty amazing changes in her body composition. So she's gaining muscle mass, she's losing body fat, and she's only staying within a one to two pound difference. So her and her client, Allison Palmer, are absolutely crushing her diet. So great job, ladies. And uh, Coach Layla, uh, tell us about your clients and maybe a win or two that you like to share with us today. Yeah, one win I have is with one of my clients, uh, Marissa. She's in a metabolic reset phase. And we are in week eight now, and she is up 300 calories from where we started, and her body weight is the same. Um, and so we've been maintaining, uh, if anything, her weight normally has been trending down, actually, but up 300 calories. We're down in cardio and steps that she began with, and so it's super exciting. 
Wow, that is amazing. So up 300 calories, maintaining her body weight, and it sounds like she's making some amazing progress uh, throughout this time in which she's priming her metabolism. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. I know our next phases after that are going to be super exciting. Boom. So guys, for those of you who do not yet know what a metabolic reset phase is, Coach Lily, could you explain to us what this phase is and how it can benefit someone who's dieting to lose body fat? Yeah, it's especially beneficial for those who have been dieting in a fat loss phase for an extended period of time. So this just kind of resets your metabolism, you know, during a fat loss phase, you're decreasing calories, you're increasing expenditure. And at this phase, we work to do the opposite. We work to increase your calories, decrease your expenditure, all while maintaining around the same weight that you left off your fat loss phase at. Um, so just kind of getting your metabolism back up as close to maintenance as we can. And so that way, next fat loss phase we have, we have more potential because we're not starting at a low, maybe 1200 calorie, 10,000 steps a day. We might be starting then at 1600 calories with like 3000 steps a day. So it just gives us more potential to do, uh, get closer to those goals during the next phase. Boom. Well said, Layla. So that was perfect. Guys, if you're if you've, if you've been dieting for 8, 10, 12, 15 weeks, you're feeling tired, if your cows are getting so yeah. low, maybe if you're doing a lot of cardio and you, if you want to break, the metabolic reset phase would be the next best and honestly the only phase to go into that can really uh, – revamp your fat loss potential. And if you have not yet grabbed a free copy of our Metabolic Reset Cheat Sheet, again, that's our Metabolic Reset Cheat Sheet, uh, comment Metabolic Reset below, and I will, I will personally send you through Facebook Messenger a copy of our Cheat Sheet just for you to learn exactly what this phase is and how you, how you can integrate it into your program to get amazing success. So without further ado, let's hop on to today's episode. Again, tonight we'll be going over carbs, facts, and fiction. We're going to talk all about carbohydrates. We're going to bust some myths together. And the reason why we want to dedicate one entire episode to carbs is because we feel that's one macronutrient that gets a lot of attention and, at least in my perception, is the most demonized macronutrient that can actually help you lose fat fast and keep it off without experiencing mm -hmm. lethargy and being tired, um, irritable, and while experiencing some amazing changes in your performance in the gym. So, Layla, why don't you lead us off today? What is one, what is the top myth that you want to start us off with when it comes to carbs and how we perceive them towards our goals? Absolutely. One myth that I get hit with a lot is that carbs are going to make you gain weight. They're just, they're going to do it. And that's a tough one. <laughs> I hear it all the time. Um, right. Exactly. So many clients come in, they're like, oh, I've done keto and low carb um, carbs. I just, I just can't have in my body. I'll gain weight if I eat carbs. It's just, that's just not it. <laughs> so, what would you say, so what would you say to someone who just truly believes that, hey, I just really can't have carbs um, and they're fearful of carbs. What would you tell yeah. them to, to make them trust that process and to consume more carbs? So one thing to start with, it all comes down to calories in versus calories out. So carbs often, like you said, they get demonized. I feel like carbs are easy to overeat, which mm -hmm. might put you in a calorie surplus, which can then lead to you gaining weight. Carbs themselves, it's not going to make you gain weight. Just we know that no one food, no one macronutrient is going to make you gain or lose weight. It's all about mm. finding that balance in calories in versus calories out. So that would be the first place I start. Like how much are we having of a carb that we feel like might be causing us to gain weight? You made a really great point about how carbs are like super tasty. So in that regard, we're more likely to um, overeat them. Um, and that mm -hmm. could take us over a calorie deficit into a surplus that could cause weight gain. And as you said, guys, what's important to know that the only way to gain weight is to be in a calorie surplus. So one macronutrient like carbs or fats or protein, that's, you know, that's not going to cause fat gain. The only thing that will cause mm -hmm. fat gain as if, is if, if you eat one macronutrient in a quantity so much that takes you into a calorie surplus. Absolutely. Great myth. So guys, if you're, if you're thinking, Hey, maybe I should avoid carbs because you know, they're gonna make me gain weight. 
know that carbs are actually advantageous for you, uh, especially towards fat loss. I'm a big believer in carbs or fat loss. And, you know, Coach Layla and I and our team have been working with hundreds of women over the past eight years. And one thing is, is that we've seen over and over again is that women who keep their protein high and their carbs from being too low actually have far greater sustainable success in their fat loss journeys. And that's because they're not depriving themselves of the one thing they enjoy, um, among other things, and because carbs play such an important role in two main things. Number one, in our energy. The more energy we experience, the more likely we are to move around and burn more calories, and the more weight we're going to lose from being active. Number two, carbs have the most significant impact on a hormone called leptin. Leptin is a fat loss hormone that is produced from fat cells. Now, the thing is, once this guy drops down from either – dieting too low in calories or restricting carbs too much, that's going to make your fat loss efforts a lot tougher because it's going to prevent you from feeling full throughout your journey. And the last thing you want is to feel hungry all the time. So carbs are so important when it comes to losing fat. And in fact, I'm talking a lot here. Um, so one last thing on this topic is we recommend starting out eating roughly 1.25 grams per pound of your body weight in carbs. So pretty high in carbs. And we do not recommend dropping below 0 0.75, 0 0.75 grams per pound in carbs. Because think about it. Your brain itself uses 130 grams of glucose in one day, 130 grams. If you're, 100, if you're 150 pounds and you eat 110 grams of carbs, if you feel foggy, if you can't think, if you're tired, that is why. Low carb is not always the answer. Mm -hmm. I also think it's important to note that carbs – do hold more water mo molecules in your body compared to any other macronutrient. So when you're thinking about like, if you see, if you're weighing yourself consistently on those days, you have more carbs, if your weight might be up and then you're just relating carbs to weight gain. So you want to mm. stay away from them. Just being aware that that's not fat gain. Again, we know we're only going to be okay. gaining fat if we're in a calorie surplus. And so if anything, those water weight fluctuations are going to be huge, especially just when you're having more carbs. And if you're having them inconsistently, you're more likely to see that fluctuation because again, we're holding more water molecules. If you're typically low carb, low carb, low carb, and then have high carb, we're going to be holding on to more naturally because we've been depriving ourselves. And so just accounting for that and knowing that just because you see those fluctuations, that again, does not mean that you gained three pounds of fat in one night, because trust me, you did not. <laughs> you guys, Layla is bringing the heat tonight in Washington. Great <laughs> job. That is awesome. If you did not catch that, rewind that. That is definitely worth replaying and listening to again. Uh, all the facts tonight. That is awesome, Layla. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. <laughs> Next one I want to go over is I hear this all the time and that is it hurts my heart because I think that God has put the food on this earth to like plant form that's good for our, our bodies like fruits. And every time I hear someone say, hey, you should avoid fruits because they're high in sugar, it really just hurts my heart because fruits are some of like the most nutritious foods in the world. And Especially, even if you have diabetes, you should not have to think you have to avoid fruit. And the sugar content in fruit, it's completely natural. And you'd have to eat upwards of 20 servings of fruit a day for any sugar from fruit to be converted into fat. And I don't know about you guys, but I've never eaten 20, grams of, 20 servings of fruit in my life in one day. So in, in addition to that, Look at the other food choice that you're consuming. We're comparing like carbs or sugar from fruit compared to things like white rice or white bread. Like that's still okay. But with that fruit, you're getting a ton of antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals, fiber that will help you stay, help you stay full. And again, it's going to help you improve your health, not only your blood sugar, your blood pressure, your blood cholesterol. So please do not – Fear away from fruit because of its sugar content. What mm -hmm. do you think about that, Layla? Yes. So I think one thing super important to note, all carbs you have, whether it is fruit, whether it is bread, whatever that is, it is all going to break down to one thing. It's going to break down to sugar. It's going to break down to glucose because that is how your body digests. That's how metabolism works. So regardless of whatever that carb is, it's all going to break down to that sugar. And so thinking that like fruit is bad because you just correlate sugar with fruit. 
uh, not true. And it's just, you're going to get so many other nutrients from that fruit, you know, especially if you're not one who loves a lot of vegetables, having those colors in your diet are so important to make sure we're having all the micronutrients that we need. Um, those go into a lot of the small processes of your body. And so if you're not big on vegetables, if you don't like things, if you don't like spaghetti squash, that's yellow and you need some yellow micronutrients in your diet, like having a banana crucial like you're going to need that your body wants that and so not being afraid of that because it's going to be all for the better speed of banana that's probably one fruit i hear most often to avoid because it's high yes in and while I don't banana, know why. yeah no like i i get it like banana, and i actually you know a side note but i know i've i said that fruit never belongs in pancakes but layla I have just discovered mixing mashed banana and pancake mix. And I like, told you bananas and pancakes are it. it it's absolutely like it's ch ch completely transformed the way I look at like I'll take the extra 30 grams of carbs on top of 50. Like it's guys, if you have not yet mixed bananas with pancake mix, <laughs> try that. It will transform your life. I promise you'll you. never be the same. No, like you'll never, I will not ever eat pancakes again without smashed bananas. Like I have like rotten bananas waiting for pancake mix right now on my countertop. But guys, like, I don't even bananas. really like bananas, but in a pancake, it's elite. It's funny. You mentioned bananas and, you know, growing up, um, we would, um, I don't know what, what they're called. Um, but like in elementary school, we would have these candies, like not gobstoppers, maybe gobstoppers or the hard candy. You know what I'm talking okay. about? Well, maybe a gobstopper. I don't know. The, the banana flavor was terrible. And that really took me off on a curve of like never like bananas until okay. actually, if you guys know what I'm talking about, it came in those like box like this. And I may be older than most people here, but anyway, I, I would get them at recess and I, they forever changed my outlook on bananas because they were disgusting. But then I'll actually, Full circle. yeah, yeah. Anyway, bananas, high in sugar, that's okay. Fit it within your calorie budget and know that if you are in a calorie deficit, if you are active each day, if you're eating most of your calories from nu nutrient-dense foods, it's okay if you have a lot of sugar in your diet because sugar, the dose, this may sound like kind of harsh, but the the dose, the, the dose depends, is do how do you say this? Um, the, uh, it's, uh, scratch that idea. We're going to the next topic. Layla. <laughs> We talked about blood sugar yeah. spiking by carbs. Yes. So I think that's another good myth, kind of just to play off the fruit one with the sugar content, is that carbs spike your blood sugar. Um, and that's another reason why carbs should be avoided. Um, I think especially with us both being registered dietitians, working with diabetic clients, um, this is super, super important. I get this one a lot. Is just sugar in your bloodstream, it is necessary, Right. And so you're, again, you're going to have sugar from any carb that you're having regardless. And so being aware of that. And then also the issue comes in with the amount you may be having and the timing that it may be released. And so when I talk about timing, I mean like simple carbohydrates versus complex carbohydrates. So simple, if you're just having maybe a piece of fruit, that's going to be a simple carbohydrate. It's going to break down quick. There's not a ton else to it. If we're having a complex carbohydrate like a potato, we're going to be getting more fiber, uh, some other micronutrients, a little bit of protein, maybe a little bit of fat, depending on what you're having with it. And that's going to take longer to break down. So you're not going to see that spike as much. So what you're pairing with, what you're pairing that carb with and what the carb itself is, is going to make a really big difference on the blood sugar aspect. And again, just knowing that like, regardless, it's crucial that you have it. So Absolutely. Great. That's a great point. Guys, definitely. <clears throat> that's another heavy hitter from Layla. Love how you mentioned that too. And, and, you know, just to add to, and even, uh, you know, piggyback off, off what you said, it's, you know, very, very um, few times do we just eat carbs alone. And so every, anytime, mm -hmm. like you said, anytime we combine protein or fat with our carbs, um, like even pancakes, I have like peanut butter and protein with pancakes and that will drastically impact the amount of blood sugar that's raised in the magnitude and also the insulin that's secreted to bring that back to normal levels. So know that if you're just eating cotton candy, that's probably like, I mean, that's a different story because I ate cotton, I ate cotton candy without, by the way, Alexis, um, told us the answer. It's, it's runts. Remember runts? Oh, right. The candy. Yeah, the candy runs. Yes, with the little fruit shapes, and they're the hard candies. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, runs like the oranges were great. Um, I'm sorry. That was uh, Alex. That's, her name's Allie. That's okay. Thank you. Both, both are fine. That's my yeah. girl. She's good. She's amazing. Uh, thanks for joining <laughs> us, Ali. Um, really appreciate you. And yes, yeah, so Runtz, I will never buy Runtz again in my life. I haven't seen them in the stores. But <clears throat> speaking of carbs and eating them, going to our next big myth, another big thing I hear all the time is that we should not have carbs at nighttime because they turn into fat. So here's the facts. Okay, first off, comment below nighttime if you've ever heard that eating carbs at nighttime will just – magically turn into fat because like growing can I up comment that below? Because i've heard that we, you can comment for sure right encourage that love love the engagement in fact growing up my dad and my mom my mom's probably watching this but yeah uh, they, they i would hear like hey we got to have dinner before seven because after seven the uh the uh metabolism fairy comes and it shuts things down like i remember going up i was like yo kitchen's closed it's kind of like your metabolism stops at 7 p.m. Here's the, here's some facts. Your metabolism never stops. You're constantly burning calories throughout the nighttime. So here's a few facts. <clears throat> Number one, it doesn't matter when you eat anything, um, including carbs or calories. What matters most is how much you eat throughout a 24-hour period. So literally, you can have – your entire 2000 calorie diet between six and 8 PM. And you will not gain body fat. You will not put on body fat. Uh, we can get very detailed with like the energy uses, like, Hey, your body can't process that many calories. Yes. I understand that. But from a weight change perspective, you will not gain body fat. that will tip the scale. Don't weigh yourself in the morning because that will likely not get digested all the way to have the water extracted. But Here's two things that I recommend. One, if you have trouble, hey, my mom's on. Hey, mom, love you. Uh, if you have trouble sleeping at nighttime, I recommend, um, well, not really recommend, try having carbs at nighttime. Like after this, I'm going to go and probably have some more pancakes. Here's why. Carbs, when digested, they cause a secretion in serotonin. Serotonin is a happy hormone. Um, like if you've ever been irritable and like, like really moody and not happy and like, yo, I haven't had carbs in like eight days. That's why. Anyway, what's important is this serotonin converts to melatonin. I promise this will make sense in a second. Melatonin is a sleep hormone that's produced in your pineal gland. This guy tells your head, yo dude, it's time to sleep. So it makes you feel tired. So when melatonin's high produced from serotonin, calls an increase from carbohydrates, you get tired and you sleep better, which can actually help you with getting a, a deeper night's rest. So additionally, there's been studies done that have shown that people who are lean, who actually um, get into the deeper phases of REM sleep, <clears throat> in the second half of sleep, they're, get this guys, their sleeping metabolic rate exact, is actually just as high or even higher than their resting metabolic rate. So if you're worried about getting fat, know that one, it will not happen unless you're in a calorie surplus. And two, you're probably getting better sleep and you are metabolizing, metabolizing those nutrients all throughout the nighttime. Now, if you have trouble sleeping because your stomach's full or you suffer from, um, what is that called? Um, acid in your stomach. Um, like GERD? Yes, yes, thank you. If like I we have yeah, so if you experience uh gastric reflux, sorry, I'm running on low sleep, so GERD, don't eat nighttime, especially high fat foods. But anyway, to make a long story short, eating carbs at nighttime will not make you gain fat. It may you may make mm -hmm. you and plus here's the deal. Most people like myself, I I get the nibbles at nighttime. So I want to eat more at nighttime. So I will save more and more carbs up towards the latter end of the day to enjoy those carbs more because that are, that that'll better help me stay within my calorie budget. Layla, what is next on our myth list of carbs tonight? Yes, cutting carbs is the best way to lose fat. Cause low carb, it, that's just the only way to go. Mmm. Um, I disagree a little. <laughs> Tell us about that. Why do you disagree? 
as we know, you know, all comes down to calories in versus calories out as far as your weight goes. And then we're talking about fat specifically, that's going to really correlate to the amount of protein you're having in your diet. Because if you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to be losing weight. What weight you're losing, whether it is fat or muscle, kind of comes down to that composition a little bit more. We know for a fact, if we're prioritizing that protein, our muscles are going to be fueled. They're going to be building. They're going to be more sustained, which means regardless of what we are doing with carbs and fat, as long as we're in that calorie deficit, we're pretty much just going to be losing fat. Mm. That's a great point. And Layla, tell us what advantage is having carbs in your diet? How does that affect our gym performance and our, how does it impact our muscle mass? Oh, absolutely. So carbs are super important because that's going to fill your muscle glycogen, muscle glycogen in our muscles naturally. And so you need carbs for your workouts to have a good workout and to, for one, have that energy um, that you feel like maybe mentally, but also that energy for your muscles to like get through the entire thing and not have to just completely stop because your muscles are so gassed and you feel so fatigued. Mm -hmm. And then we also know after that workout, carbs are going to be crucial along with protein, but you just use that energy stored in your muscles. You need something to replace, replace it. And so that's going to be coming from carbs again to refill that muscle glycogen. So they can also work in that recovery process. So again, we're not losing that muscle, but we're constantly building so we can get the composition that we are aiming for. Guys, can you feel that heat from Layla tonight? She's absolutely on <laughs> fire with these facts. I mean, seriously, that was gold. I am Too honored to have you on the podcast tonight. <laughs> you are some fire tonight. Thank you for that amazing – am I the only one excited? If you're excited for Layla, type Layla below. Let's give some love Ooh. to Layla. She's in Washington. Right now. <laughs> She's probably like, yo, it's almost dinner time. Let me go to bed. Um, but I appreciate you. That was great. Here's another fact. We have one more after this one, and we're going to let you go tonight. Um, We've heard a lot about the glycemic index. So the glycemic index yes. is an index in which it rates how quickly a carbohydrate food increases your blood sugar. And though, and so there's this uh, you know low, medium, and high index. And you know in, back in the '90s, he would said, "Hey, you have to. It's best to consume lower GI foods because it wouldn't spike insulin as much. Therefore, you won't store." as much body fat. Well, number one, insulin is not the dictator of whether or not we gain or lose body fat. Uh, it is on the cellular level, but not on the scale. And number two, the glycemic load, which takes account the quantity of the food you're eating, is a better predictor of the quality of the carbohydrate and the impact it has on blood sugar than just the glycemic index. Because again, we just, unless it's cotton candy, we don't consume carbs by themselves. Anytime you have protein, like eating a sandwich, you have carbs, protein, protein, carbs. And like, if you're like me today, go check out my IG. I had some almonds for lunch with some carbs that will slow down the digestion of the glucose in the bloodstream. Again, completely throwing out glycemic index out of the window. So that should not have as much weight as the complete composition of the meal, and if you go with fat loss, the complete calorie composition of your day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Layla, wrap us up today with our very last fact or myth for carbs this evening. All white carbs, I've heard both ways for this one. All white carbs are healthy or also unhealthy and should Ooh. be avoided like we should only eat all white carbs or we should not eat any at all there's no in between with this myth it's always one or the other drastic um so what do you think about that man you know again i'm just not a fan so yeah. i think the negative if we're coming from an unhealthy standpoint a lot of times white carbs get hit with unhealthy because White carbs are typically, they're refined and processed a little bit more. So they have less of those other nutrients with them. Like they might have less, some less protein, some less fibers, some less micronutrients just because of the processing process. That was a lot. But because of how they're processed, they might have a little bit less to them. Again, that does not necess necessarily make them bad. Like if you like your white pasta, girl, boy, whoever you are, eat your white pasta. That's okay. It all comes down to the portion size. Um, if you want something that maybe is a little bit more nutrient dense, might make you feel a little fuller longer, might help you hit those other targets, going for like a whole grain that's refined less is going to be beneficial. But again, 
we there's no one food that's healthy or unhealthy. I really hate those terms. And I always am quick to say that there's no healthy or unhealthy food. It's, I like to say fun foods. So those are more like the foods that we might correlate with being like a cheat or unhealthy. Those are just, that's a fun food. Like we like that. Cool. We just need to watch the portion a little bit more. Um, but again, nothing innately is wrong with that. Could, could I name my top three favorite white carbs? Yeah, absolutely. Let me hear. Number one, um, buttermilk Kodiak cakes. That's number one. Mm. Number two, yes. white potatoes, great, so great mm -hmm. source of iron, potassium, mm -hmm. a little bit of protein, and also popcorn. Super high in antioxidants. It's white. It's fluffy. It's fluffy is not. It's word. crunchy. It's delicious. Yeah, I wouldn't describe uh, popcorn as fluffy. But anyway, those are my three favorite. And what you said is perfect as well. Um, guys, I'd love to hear below. Comment below with your favorite white carb or your favorite carb source. Mine's pancakes. Layla, what is yours? Mine, some like some dinner rolls, like some mm. white dinner rolls, you know, like. We're at Texas Roadhouse, we're at Olive Garden, whatever that is, I love it. And that's okay. And that can fit in my day. I'm planning accordingly. I know what to expect. And I'm not going to deprive myself to be to a point where I'm going to overeat it. Because again, those white carbs, carbs in general, they're easy to overeat. So if we're restricting ourselves, we might feel a little more likely to binge. If I'm planning for it to have some two breadsticks at Olive Garden at dinner, cool. I'm going to satisfy I'm going to have that white carb. It's still giving me some nutrients that are necessary for my body. And I'm going to keep on moving and it's going to be great. If there is one episode that you have to go back and watch <laughs> out of all 23, this is the episode you need to go do that because Layla is on a different level than anyone else in the world right now. That is amazing. <laughs> All right, seriously, this has been such an amazing episode. Um, I'm impressed. This has been really great. And I hope that you found this helpful too. Layla, are there any other ending remarks you want to make today towards our podcast on carbs, facts, fiction, or anything else? Um, I would say, how long do we have? As long as you want to. I'd say one more important point to note on, not just the fact that carbs hold more water, but also carbs impact on cortisol, your stress hormone, especially for women in general. I think that's important to talk about is when you're in a fat loss phase, especially stress is higher. Your body is kind of fighting you at times. It's resisting being, Hey, what's going on? Like, Hey, I'm kind of hungry. Hey, like I'm still hungry. It's been a couple of weeks. You've been consistent. I don't like it. Um, so also noting carbs importance and just kind of giving your body that hormonal relaxation, um, to help you not hold on to as much, not bite you a little bit more per se. And so having carbs consistently, it's just going to be so crucial for your overall goal. Um, from a physical standpoint. And then again, that mental aspect of just, you know, a lot of times carbs are your favorite foods. Carbs are the things you like to eat carbs. You also have like that bad connotation with, so you're more likely to be like, Ooh, you know, I'm a rebel having this carb at 10 PM. Um, so it's just, it's so important to just have it consistently to have that positive relationship with it. So those results you're making, what you're doing right now, it's sustainable, it's maintainable. And then also just all the impacts we've talked about on your body, on different with water, we talked about with um, with cortisol, with um, uh, what am I thinking? Melatonin, all of those other hormones. It's just it's so crucial, and so don't be afraid. Embrace it. You love it. You want to. We are here to tell you that you can have your cake and eat it too. So, oh man, if that wasn't the best way to end this podcast, I don't even interrupt <laughs> you guys. But that was amazing, guys. Um, first off. Thank you, Layla. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that was, I'm sorry, that was amazing. Um, I want to say that one, it's been a privilege to have you on tonight, Layla. And Thanks for having if, me. If you're, if you're right now listening to this live or on replay, and if you're struggling on how to fit your favorite foods or carbs into your diet, and if you want, if you want Coach Layla's expert help and helping you bust through your bus. Bust, let me get this out. Bust through your plateau to help you lose fat, tone up, and transform your lives once and for all. Guys, comment tone up below. Let us know. Coach Layla will reach out, ask a few questions, and see if you know you're a great fit for a program. She's an amazing coach here at Tandem. Uh, she's our lead dietitian on the team, and she's transformed hundreds of women's lives um, across the world, um, as she is right now from us. So 
really lately it's been a pleasure comment tone up if you want some insight some professional help from layla uh and i promise you she will transform your life so guys thanks for tuning in layla thank you for tuning in uh for joining me today i appreciate you what time will you be, will you be back in florida next week this week i'll be back sunday evening i'll be back in florida and then ready to hit the ground running Boom. Let's go. Well, we definitely have to have you on again, Layla. Thank you for joining us on your vacation. Uh, can't wait to see your pics in your videos with your uh, choreographer and also cannot wait for you to compete again in July. So let's kick some butt. Thank you for being here. Have a great night, Layla and everyone. And we'll see you guys next Thursday at 7 p.m. Sounds great. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Tandem Talk Show. If you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.